basically the device is, as you see, it's is a peripheral nerve stimulator. And then again, this acceleration transducer, which will measure the force of acceleration and transmit that into a number, which we see on the devices between zero and 100%. So you really want 0.9 or 90% recovery at the end of the case before you extubate a patient. Basically, once we've done our induction of anesthesia, it's important to obtain a baseline measurement with the device. Oftentimes, our baseline measure is more than 100%. So with the Toffwatch SX, you have to correct for that with your final measure. For example, if you had a trade for ratio of 0.9, you have to correct for what that baseline measure was. As we see here, we're going to do a train of force stimulation. And we have 128%. So again, we'll have to correct for that at the end of the case, that 90%, for example, that we would obtain. And what that means is that the fourth twitch is slightly stronger in this case than the first twitch? Yes, that's one of the limitations of the technology. Again, other limitations, you have to make sure that the thumb is freely moving when the device is used and it's moving in the same plane. So oftentimes we'll have to tape the fingers down here. So one of the reasons the technology really hasn't caught on more as a more popular monitor with anesthesiologists is really related to some of these complexities when you're using it. It's not a, a simple device to use, and there's really a learning curve to using it also. I think you have to use it 50 or 60 times before you really start getting reliable and reproducible results. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's, it's a better monitor, but maybe a little more cumbersome to use than a qualitative monitor.